Hello everyone, it's me Mairead here and I'm back again and if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail or the title or whatever for this week's video I'm doing sort of like how I published a romance novel, slight advice on how to publish a romance novel I suppose. Um, I do just want to preface this and say I've only published one romance novel, I probably did a hundred things wrong but um, I figured I would film this because if maybe one of my 800 followers on here um wants to publish a book then maybe this might help just in one single way also i'm no expert basically but this is just my bit of advice and this is just basically what i did um and i did say that i was going to do a video like this so i figured i would post a video on how i sort of went about it so i'm just i did it by steps some of these steps might be a bit convoluted this is just the way i went about it so the first step is think of an idea um i can't tell you how to think of an idea you have to have the idea i can't give you any ideas for that i'll be honest <laughs> um i had the idea for a while um if any of you didn't know my book is about a photography graduate who wants to be a photographer i am a photography graduate me and my friends are photography graduates um so me and my friends were saying in our final year of uni i wish somebody would just hand us a job because we were tired of always applying for jobs never getting anywhere constant rejections constant changing of cover letters cvs blah blah blah, blah. it was just too much we were tired and we sort of said i wish somebody just walked into my life and had me a job and that's sort of what i did with olive i was like i like the idea of um olive being really down on her luck somebody walking into her life just offering her a job and her life changes that's what i really wanted to, to do um i sort of like the idea of the books are unrealistic and a bit fairy tale ish it was a bit like dreamlike to me so that's where that idea came from for me but i can't tell you how to do the idea so there you go <laughs> and then step two write the book oh, i also couldn't tell you how to write the book i don't know the best way to the, write a book um, I have a photography degree, I don't have an English literature degree, I don't have a publishing degree, I don't have anything to do with the literary world um, degree-wise, so I don't know what is the best way to write a book. I have no idea. I don't know what makes a good book. I know what I like, I know what I did, but I just don't know. What I did was I planned the book out really meticulously, like I planned out what would happen in each chapter. It didn't stay that way, obviously, but that's what I planned because I've tried to write books before and I didn't plan them out as meticulously and they just sort of went nowhere. So that is the way I had to do it. Um, and I wrote a book going away anyhow just by trying basically um and then step three really good step so far finish writing the book okay so once i think you've finished the book i took a break and this is what i'm saying take a break take a week take two weeks remove yourself from that world read another book read three books don't read any books at all watch 10 different tv series but remove yourself from the book because i think you get too caught up in the book um, and in that world and everything that's happened so it all makes sense so much sense to you because you're the one that's writing it but somebody else reading it they'll be a bit like what it might not make as much sense so you have to remove yourself i think is what is best in my opinion <laughs> and then step four is edit um so read it through grammar spelling mistakes plot holes the whole nine yards if you read lines that you hate and you don't like rephrase them sort out paragraphing all that sort of stuff things that you just detest get rid of things that you think this doesn't make sense anymore get rid of um just everything that you think isn't as what you would like it to be and i think things that you're not sure on keep because somebody else can go through and go actually i really love that or go no that should go but um i think edit be kind but firm is my thing for a lot of things but yeah be kind of them and then i always sort of say this is the second draft and once you're finished with it then that's your second draft once you feel like you're happy with what that edit is then to me that's your second draft and then step five this is the way that i did it i don't actually know if this is the right way to do it but then i got beta readers and basically what i did was i finished the book i edited it and then i went well is it even a good book I don't know I've spent like a year or so writing it or I don't even know how long at that point I'd spent not writing it but I spent so long writing it and I went is this a good book I don't know um so then I said to my friends will you read it and my friends didn't really read it they said they would and they didn't really read it I don't care equally I'm not bashing my friends my friends are the best <laughs> um 
and the busy, the busy people. So I really didn't care they didn't read it. And I also now would actually say, don't let your friends read it because they'll always be clouded with their judgment. Um, like they probably wouldn't say things how they are because you know they know that you spent a lot of time doing this, etc. etc. So I came on here on my YouTube and I said, I've written a book, would anyone like to beta read it? Please message me on Instagram or in the comments, but please with somebody help beta read it. And I had maybe about five, six people beta read it, basically that I didn't really know. Um, and the general sort of consensus for me was that it was a good book, all right book, needed some edits, need some refinery, but it was what it was. And I think, so I can't really, my advice to getting beta readers basically is through social media. I don't know if this is how everyone gets beta readers. I don't know if people pay their beta readers. I never did. I don't, I just didn't know. Um, but I think the best way to do this is to have a book Instagram. And I think the reason why to have a book Instagram is because to market your book once it's ready for release, you need to know what the market is like. You need to know what it's like to market yourself on social media. So you need to be part of the consumerism, basically. Um, so I think have a book Instagram, make friends on your book Instagram, follow like-minded people, people who like similar books, people who like books that are similar to your tribe of book that you are writing, follow those people, make friends with those people. I think it's easy enough and the book community is fairly welcoming, at least my little circle that I'm in. So, um, so that is my advice is to have a book Instagram before you've maybe even written the book or while writing the book, during writing the book, make it. And I... It's really strange. I didn't set my book Instagram out as an author one and it's still not really even an author one now because I know people followed me originally just for my book recommendations and just to hear me talk about books and not just my own book. So I still always recommend other people's books still on my book Instagram. So um I'm I'm in a I'm in a weird sort of place where I'm still recommending books but also still um recommending my own book. Uh, and I try to be fair with what I do with both because I don't wanna always be talking about my book and always not always talking about other books because I do know why people followed me um but that's a bit more niche to me because I have the YouTube and not everyone not every author has the YouTube I don't know has YouTube makes YouTube videos <laughs> god um but either way I think beta readers is a good step next step to go and then step six more edits again again so once the beta readers beta readers came back I went and did another round of edits because I was like well I need to change this, get rid of this, add this in, da 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 And then step seven is a Grammarly edit. So I did a Grammarly edit. Um, I don't know if I'd... It's really strange because I saw an author say, if you can't afford a content and a line edit, then don't get the line edit, just get the content edit and just do Grammarly for the, for the line edit. I did a Grammarly and I think it helped enough uh, but the, yeah, I think it helped enough, but I don't really know. Um, I don't really know if it's something that I would 1000% recommend, you know, if you've got the money, then maybe pay for both. I don't, like, I generally don't know about that one. I did find it useful. It helped with some paraphrasing. It helped with some Grammarly. I did find it useful overall and I'm glad I did do it, but I don't know if this is 1000% like a, a needed step when you, when you do the book, this is just my step. So step eight was I printed out the book. Um, and so I'd done all the changes from the Grammarly edit. And I was like, I'm really heavily dyslexic. I have those coloured lens that's meant to help me read, but I don't really use them loads. But I thought I'll print out the book and holding it like physically, it was just on A4 paper. I have it somewhere scattered in my room. I should probably hold it up. But I thought this will help, this will help me see what it would really be like, if that makes sense. So I paid to have it printed out, um, it was about like 90 pages, I can't remember how much it was, I don't think it was tons of money, but I printed it out, I like stapled it all together, um, and I don't think this is an essential step, but it really did help me pick out more mistakes, and it really did help me pick out um, things that I really didn't like, and the way things flowed, it really, really helped with that basically so from all the things that i noticed there on that that printed out version i ended up 
doing I ended up doing the edit for them so another edit incurred after printing it out and reading through and doing the editing and then step nine was reach out to an editor so I was a bit I think delusional or deluded or misinformed or I don't I don't say delusional but I just didn't really know um I probably should have reached out to an editor a lot earlier than I did um because a lot of editors that I looked at they're like next availability was like april 2022 and i always had it in my mind that i wanted to publish it in january of 2022 because um it's a bit of a silly reason i don't think i'll ever publish anything again in january because it meant that christmas i had no time off at christmas but in january me and my friends are like people have leftover money from amazon gift cards from christmas basically was the sort of idea so that's why i thought i'll do christmas i'll do january but either way so i was like april's too far away and so I sort of there were editors that I looked at that I'd seen other people use and you know a lot of them were just yeah no no availability um so the way that I would suggest to find an editor is to look if you are publishing this is all to do with romance really sorry if you're like publishing like a science fiction book I don't really know but when I published my romance book, what I did was I looked at other romance books that I thought were really well written, that were also independently published and also self-published. And I went through and I looked at who the editor was. It will say, hopefully in the beginning, and sometimes it will say in the acknowledgements. So if there's any book that you really like, you can go into the acknowledgements or you can go to the very beginning. It will say like cover design by this person and then edited by da da da. So that's sort of what I did. And I reached out to a few of those people, didn't get very far. Um, and then, so I'd hit a wall. So the next thing to do is literally just look through like content editor on Instagram, the hashtags, that's all I did. And I found a fair few. I found one woman who was in the UK and I will tell you her name. I'm pretty sure I've said this. Um, I don't think it matters me telling you her name. I found her really useful. I don't think she minds. I think she was kind but firm. And her name was Elizabeth Cartwright. Cartwright, I think that's how you say it. Um, and yeah, she did my edit basically. I think I paid for a line edit, I think is what I paid for because I did reach out to her and say, I don't know if I need a content or a line edit because I've done a Grammarly edit. I've had beta readers, I've edited about a few times, but I just need something more like I need somebody else like I need to pay somebody to basically go through it and go this is all wrong this is all right this is da 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 and she basically just went through it found grammatical errors found um there wasn't any really plot holes to be honest because it was a pretty straightforward story it's not like a you know I wasn't weaving loads of stories together it was a pretty straightforward thing um so there wasn't really plot holes but she found like other issues or phrasing that didn't seem right or you know cutting out info dumping because I had an issue with info dumping um so you know she really really helped with that um so she basically just did like a general edit on the thing but that is my best sort of advice I do think the time frame can be really tricky because if you reach out while you're still editing and then that means that you can secure a spot in maybe like two months time but you haven't actually finished everything or if you're even still writing you reach out but you don't finish everything on time it can be really tricky um the timing wise and i probably should have reached out a lot earlier than i did you can find editors on places like fiverr um things like that that are editing websites that people put themselves on uh, like freelance editors and yeah i think a little digging sometimes can go a really long way uh when it comes to content editors and all this sort of stuff um and then step two cover design this is a bit of a hard one for me to give you advice on so like i said i have a photography degree my friends have photography degrees we now to use photoshop me less so now because i'm so rusty with it and useless i don't know how much advice i can give you on this i'll be completely honest um because like the way that I did it you probably wouldn't have done that with somebody who's paying your who you're paying to do the edit with so like I was going back and forth with my friends for like months two months so you know I just it's a bit of a strange one I do have a think that there are people who are professional cover, cover designers um there's a place called there's a 
or a company called Books and Moods or Books and Mods, something like that. I'll put them in the description. But yeah, I know them. And you can, there are some places as well that you will be able to find that do like pre-made ones that aren't as expensive. But I do have the genuine belief that if you are spending all this time, all this money, like to pay for an edit, does there, you might as well pay a lot of money for the cover design. You want, I was of the opinion, um, that you want to set your book up in the best way possible for it to do as well as it possibly can. Um, and so I think people do judge a book by its cover. It might be worth paying the extra money or what have you for a good book design. But equally, it's not 1000% imperative. Like if your book is an amazing book, people will eventually find it. At least I think and hope. That's why I like to hope anyway. Um, you know, but I do think that having a good cover really does help. This is also slightly the same with teasers. You can do like these sort of like good deals of book designers where they make teasers because they've owned the copyright of the stock image. So they can make teasers. Uh, but I have noticed a downwards trend of teasers on Instagram in my own professional opinion, because I do follow some in indie authors. I've definitely noticed downwards trend of teasers. So yeah, take that with a pinch of salt in our teasers. I'm not sure they're really in trend at the minute. And the step 11, so I'm calling this step admin. So there's stuff that you need to do while your book is getting edited because you can't do anything to the book really when it's getting edited because somebody's doing it. Um, so my edit took three weeks and it was 80k words, basically. Just to let you know, general time shift of me. Um, so there are some essentials you need to do if you're going to publish, especially through Amazon. This is what I did. So this is what I'm giving advice on. You need to make your Amazon KDP and like your author central account. There are countless videos on YouTube if you need exact advice on how to do exact things on there. But this is just what I did and what I think is imperative that you need to do. You need to make those, you need to make your um, Goodreads author profile and upload your book onto Goodreads. Because if you don't have it on Goodreads, you know, it. I think it does need to be on there. I also created a book funnel. I paid for a book funnel. Book funnel is a way to send your arcs out. I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't include a step here for ARC because I struggled so much to get people to want to read the ARCs, basically. I really struggled with that. Um, I think I sent out three or four ARCs in the end. So then that's just being completely honest. I didn't send out very many. So, but I did pay for the book funnel as a way to send out the ARCs. Um, and I'll obviously leave links to all these like websites. So I'm talking about like book funnel things like that. And then step 12 is ISBNs. So ISBNs were the things that confused me the most when I was doing this. I find it so confusing and even to talk about it was so confusing. So I use Nielsen's for the ISBNs. I live in the UK. That is why I use Nielsen's. I could not tell you what to do outside the UK. I do not know. I also used it for the barcode at the back. So it was two separate payments, one for the barcode and then one for the actual ISBN, I'm pretty sure. And you also have to register your book in the UK with Nielsen's. That can take a few days, but you need to be able to do that so you can give a specified like number or print number or something like that to Amazon when you upload your book. Like, and you need to have that, especially for your physical, your print copy. If you only want to do ebooks, I don't know how much you need to worry, but print copy, you do need to worry. Also, copyright, I've been on copyright to me, very similar. So copyright is so confusing to me, at least. In the UK and yeah, well, in the UK, we don't have a register of copyrighted works. So, you know, you don't, if somebody copyrights your thing in the UK, and blatantly, obviously, you can go to whoever, like a lawyer, and say they've copyrighted my thing, da, da, da. it's protected from the minute you sort of write it, in theory, in the UK. In America, I know that you have a, a register of copyrighted works, so you have an actual letter, but the UK doesn't really work like that. It's really hard to prove your ownership. So if Amazon was to ever go to me, how do you know that you own this? Uh, how could I prove that? Because I don't have a physical letter like you would you would do in America. And you pay for it in America, you don't pay for it here. So I did a thing. I don't know if this is a money grabbing thing. I don't know if I've been scammed. I generally don't know, essentially, is what my thing is. I think it's legit because I looked at the trust reviews on what, what it was. But I've done it to try and be safe. You know, yeah, I want to protect it. Uh, but I did it later than actually my publication date because I didn't realise. Um, but so I, pub so I pu pu purchased a thing called Protect My Work 
uh from a company called protect my work and i'll leave them down below but again i'm not i'm really not recommending them because i generally don't know if this is the right thing to have done i don't know how else in the uk to prove your ownership and your thing because obviously i have my copyright stayed in the front of my book but i don't how do I prove? I don't, I just don't know. So I did that, but I did that a little bit later than my publication date. Um, not by much, maybe a few weeks, but, and then, so that was all of them. It's that, those two are so hard to explain. Those two are so confusing to me, at least anyway. So I'm sorry if that wasn't very clear, but I, I do find it quite confusing myself anyway, still. I and mean, I'm sure I'm struggle with the next book that I publish. I'm probably going to struggle with it again, but, um, my step 13 is do the final edit from the content editor my best advice for this is you know you'll receive very realistic criticism and it can really hurt and you can go i've written the worst book in the world uh because you see all these notes and remarks and you're like oh, i don't think it was worthy of all those but it ends up not being that bad it just looks worse than it is um and you'd rather somebody be harsh with you now before you publish it then yeah um also there are always going to be crazy differences your content editor could say this bit should go but you love it it's your favorite bit of the book then you can always keep it step 14 is once you've finished that you've got your final final draft in theory the content edit um i used vellum to format the books and i wasn't going to pay for a formatter you can pay for a formatter i didn't know how to format it myself I thought, you know, I don't need pretty pictures in the book. I know some people do that. I don't need pictures in the book. I don't need all these fancy, like, flowing designs. I don't care. I think a book, a book is good without it still. You know, that is a pretty new thing, what's happening, I think, with that. Um, like, having really big illustrations in a book. And I do think they are really lovely, but I don't think they're needed, like, at all. Um, and I'd rather not pay the extra money for it because my book is still good enough without it. Um so yeah i didn't i didn't bother i don't know how much i will bother because i still haven't made a return on the book so i probably won't bother for the next books either so don't worry about it i would say for vellum again i'll leave it in the link down below for vellum you can only use it if you have a mac so again i do not know how to format the book if you do not have a mac for vellum this is just how i did it i couldn't give you an alternative i generally don't know there probably is an alternative development out there for non uh, windows pcs and all that sort of stuff but i don't know it so then i sent a copy to myself and to my kindle and i basically read through it again because i was like there will be so many mistakes even still after having it content edited because there is such thing as human error and such as life so i went through and i picked out the mistakes or i picked out the things that even though i'd gone through a million times i was like oh actually that's cringy or oh actually i hate the way i phrase that or actually that just isn't needed it's, it needed it's unnecessary it's made the chapter too long it's a bit repetitive so reading it actually on your kindle was a good was probably the best way for me to go actually this bit is boring or this bit isn't good that was probably my best judgment of how the book was flowing and the pace um so once i did that i highlighted all the things i needed to get rid of or needed to change and then i went back and i did the edit i read the book again so i read it twice so but you also get to a point where you stop seeing mistakes because you've read the book so many times um so do be careful but still it is what it is so i read the book again again did the same thing went back changed any mistakes and then i sent the bar arcs out again by book funnel didn't have many people just didn't pick up the arc that was completely fine um and then i read the book a third time and then i noticed even mistakes i sent out in the arcs so i was a bit gutted but nobody's really said anything so and there probably still is maybe a grammar mistake a missing word in the book now i still don't it's been two months since i published it i probably should go back now and check and read but i still don't feel like i'm I'm in the place to want to read it again, like now, maybe next month, I want to read it again and go, this needs to change, this is a mistake, this is that. I think I could be in the place then to want to do that. But right now, I'm still not in the place to want to go back and uh, sort out any grammatical errors or a missing word or a missing phrase or something. I'm still not in the, in the right headspace, I think, to do that yet. I'm still too attached to it, still. You can only do what you can do is what my best bit of advice is, which sounds so silly, but... You know, if you've tried your best and you've tried your best, and I do think that sometimes does come across anyway. Once the art's gone out, I uploaded the final, final thing onto Amazon, and 
yeah, they released and that was all I could do. Um, and then marketing, marketing is so hard because like I'll have a, I'll post a TikTok video talking about the book and it'll get a lot of interest in the comments and it'll get like 2000 views on TikTok and it won't translate to any reads or any sales. So it's a long game, it's a hard game. Uh, I'm understanding that it's the first book I've ever published, but it, it there are days where it's disappointing and it's sad. So I do think, um, yeah, you have to be realistic as well when you go into this. I can only have done what I can have done, uh, you know, and I do know that I didn't really leave any stone unturned. So yeah, <laughs> I try not to be too harsh on myself when it comes to it, but it is what it is. Um, and you're allowed to feel however you're allowed to feel, and that is just the end of it. Um, so that was my sort of advice, that was sort of what I did step by step. I don't know if this has been much use to anyone, um, but I do find this, I find this actually quite therapeutic to talk all of it through, to talk exactly how I did it. I find it's quite therapeutic. I am going to do a separate video, like breaking down the costs, but if I did that in this video, just, I don't want this to be a super long video really. Um, but yeah, I am going to make a video, maybe I'll in two weeks time on exactly the cost and how much I spent and I might say how much I've made on it or a turn it's not it's really not even much I don't think it's even 50 pounds <laughs> so you know it is what it is thank you for watching I'm sorry if I've missed anything out I probably have ended up missing something out in this list yeah if you have any questions on how to do something I can always try and help I'm not too sure if I'll be a massive help because things like Amazon, KDP, um, I sort of had to Google and YouTube it myself. And also, by the way, I do have like my, all my social medias in the description. So like my TikTok and my Instagram, I'm a good read if you want to follow me on there too, or be friends on there. Um, then like, yeah, you guys can check me out on all those other platforms. And also my book, Portraits of Us, is also in the description. So if you want to add it to your TBR or if you want to read it, it's on Kid Unlimited or buy it you can buy it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll speak to you soon. If you could like, if you just could subscribe, I'd be greatly appreciative. And thank you so much. And speak soon. And goodbye. <laughs>